Hi, my name's Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. Today I'm going to show you another project from the August to December holiday catalog. So you're going to love it. And while I have this out, a couple of things. If you don't have one yet and you're in the U.S., I'd be happy to send you one. So just message me and let me know and I can get one in the mail to you. Also, I have several classes, but that registration is on now for or will be coming up for soon that use things out of that. That's how I'm that's why I chose today's stamp set to remind you that you can get in on that class. This one I posted, it's my last tutorial that posted before this one. The In the Pines class is starting soon. The registration for it ends on August 15th. So if you wanna be a part of this class, then you need to get in there soon and register. All of the links, if you're on Facebook, I'll put them in the comments. If you're on YouTube, they'll be in the video description. So you can go to my website to find out about it. This is a fabulous bundle. So this is the first class. I also have my holiday catalog try it club where you make 10 cards featuring all of the new papers and all of the new ribbons and all of the new embellishments. So that is closed for getting the kit unless I have a couple of extras once I get them all cut. I'm in the process of cutting now. Um, but the online access to that is available. So all of my classes, for the most part, usually have one where you get the stuff or one where you um, can just pay for the online access. So this one's upcoming. You can get the holiday try it, the videos for sure. And then if you wanna be on a waiting list for the kit in case I have them, you can be. Then I also have a class coming up that is the Gilded Autumn Suite. And so today I'm going to use the beautiful autumn stamp set. It's so much fun. It's, and the thing I like about this and the reason I chose it is because we have the fun new stamp and cut and boss machine. I'm calling mine the cutting boss. So we have that available for customers starting in September. So I know that some of you still don't have a die cut machine and you're waiting till September to get it. This one doesn't need any die cuts. So if you do this class, you won't need anything. Um, to use that machine. So it's just a punched base bundle. So that way, if you don't have it, you can still take part in this class. So the basis for this class is the bundle. So you'll see me use some of the stamps and the punches. And then I'm also using, these are the gold cards and envelopes that are in the holiday catalog. If you are doing a wedding or a wedding shower, or you make a lot of wedding cards, then you'll want these, because look how pretty these are. These are from the Shimmer Gold Paper. So they're all the envelopes. Um, and if you don't end up using all the envelopes, then you can always use this as paper. You can cut these apart and use them as paper. So I need an envelope. They're also very fall looking. And then here's the cards. So they're pre-scored. They have this lovely foil outline on them. So those are gonna be the base. This is a fun card, it's a little bit different. They're pre-scored, which I always love about them. And then I cut a piece of vanilla because I didn't want to stamp right on this, I wasn't sure. After I did my card, like even now, I'm kind of considering, do I want to stamp just on it? But I kind of like the height that it gives it because I didn't use an embossing folder, um, so it's flat paper. And I'm not a huge fan of flat paper because I love to use embossing folders. But I think we'll go with this. And then we're also going to use the gold hoops that are in the annual catalog. So let's just work on this piece and then we'll mount it all together at the end. So I'm gonna stamp the sentiment. There's some fun fonts and some fun sentiments in this stamp set. I'm going to use the thank you. If you have um, a need for thank you cards, you could use this all year round because it's not terribly fallish. And I always stamp this first because just like this, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at to see if I had everything over on the side. I thought I forgot something. So when you stamp your sentiment first, if it's not great, that's okay because you can stamp it again. So always do it first because if you've mounted your whole hoop on here and then you mess this up, there, that's much better. I was paying attention that time. If you mess it up then, then your whole card's there and then you're always left with the way trying to figure out how to cover that up. So we're good for the, this. Then I'm going to lay my hoop on here where I want it to be when the card's done. And I'm gonna take a pencil just so I know, kinda know where I'm stamping. And this is all gonna get covered up 
and I'm not going to do a whole hoop. I'm just doing one of the um, super on trend half hoops. So that's enough. It just kind of lets me know where I'm going to stamp. And then I can get that in a minute when I'm done. Then on my original card, I used shimmer white cardstock. This time I am going to use some watercolor cardstock just to show you that you have options. You don't have to do one or the other. I've pre-mounted all three of my stamps that I'm going to punch out. So I just have to stamp them once. And this is watercolor cardstock, so you do have to press a little bit harder and just leave it on just a little bit longer so the ink can soak into it. Look how pretty those are. Beautiful stamps. You could actually do this card pretty much just in whites and browns and it would be pretty, or even just in white. So ink these up again. And I have also mounted them. I'm gonna give you another quick tip on using punches. If you don't pay attention when you stick your things on here, then you might not have your punches the, the right way. So I took my punches and they're like medium sized punches. They're not many, but they're not large. And I laid all my punches like this before I mounted my um, stamps on here. Because then I knew that when this was done, I would be able to slide these in and not have to cut all around and try to mess with my how you punch. Because if you just willy-nilly stick your stamps on there, especially if you're doing a bunch of them and they're all the wrong direction, then you end up cutting this apart and you're working with tiny little pieces to stick in your stamp. So just look at your punches before, if you're going to use a punch, before you do that. And then there's a couple of um, small stamps in here that I'm going to use. This first one I'm going to stamp in Bumblebee because I want a little I want a little bit of filler behind what's going to um, be on here. It's not a lot, and I don't want the stem, so I'm just going to stamp right here and just get my my little thing of wheat. Now you can see why I wanted that on here because now I can kind of aim. I want some of these just peeking out. But if you get that stem, then it's way too long for this. So just get the part that you want. And let's do one this way. Another one maybe like here. It's all just very random. It's a wreath. So that's all I need for the bumblebee. And then I'm going to take the black again because these are black. So I want it to look like it matches. Because if you just do those, I'm a real fan of carrying the same theme through the card. So this is a little bit more, uh, not cartoony, but not realistic. These look real. This does not. So I'm just going to go back. And because it's photopolymer, I'm going to do the same thing where I just grab this and just kind of stamp over the top of them. I'm getting even less of this this time just so I don't get that stem in there and I know all this part really close to the hoops gonna be covered up so it's gonna look a hot mess but don't you worry it's gonna be beautiful when we're done that's all of the black that I need and then I have crumb um, so that's Sahara sand I guess I thought I had crumb cake I have Sahara sand and then again there's these little leaves in here that are not so they're just not as hand drawn as this but they make some nice filler so again I'm just gonna stamp them I want them all to go to the same way but I want especially some of them to come up here in the empty part of this hoop and again up here where it's gonna kind of go out of the hoop but again they look they don't look hand drawn. So I'm going to take just the skinniest little pen that you have, which this is one that we don't have anymore, but it's got a tiny, tiny tip. And then just to pull the black theme through, I'm just going to like do half and add a little line. And it makes them look a little bit more hand drawn. You don't end up seeing all of these. You just see a few. But because I don't know which ones, it's faster to just color them all. And I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it perfect because I want it to look more hand-drawn. And some of them are upside down, like that one. So I'm going to reverse it because with the pen, I can change, I can put the tip at the top. Most of those are going to get covered up. And then I'm just going to take one of my Stampin' Write markers that we're going to use in a second to paint with. Um, and I'm going to use the fine tip. 
I'll go back over. This is mango, I think. Yep. And just color in with a bullet tip those little things of wheat. That way it has two colors and it has a little bit of shading because I didn't stamp right directly on them. Again, it kind of looks like a hot mess. And now I've got some black over here, but we'll fix that. So now those are kind of filled in. And now when you put your hoop back on here, if I can pick it up, um, you can see that it's, it's gonna like add some dimension behind. So it's not just a flat wreath. Now let's go to these. And again, I'm gonna use my Stampin' Right markers and I have taken just one of the stamp blocks and I'll add just a bit more. I've got Cherry Cobbler and Merlot. And this time you just need the brush tip and you don't need hardly any ink at all. And then I've got the mango, whoops, not brush tip. And the pumpkin pie, all colors of fall. We have um, cicadas out right now and my daughter played high school and college golf. So when I go out in the afternoon, it already, it sounds like fall. We had a couple of cooler days last week and then this is um, soft suede. And normally I'm kind of, well, fall's my favorite season normally, but you know, COVID has all of our festivals being canceled. Um, and a lot of the things that we normally do aren't going to be happening. So summer's my second favorite season. So I really don't want summer to leave because if I can't have the fun things to do in fall, I'd rather have the beautiful summer weather sitting by my pool. So I'm gonna take the water painter and this is the one with the smallest tip. And I have found when you're working with something super tiny like this, hardly put any water in it because it can come out faster. And if you have hardly any, then you're really just working with a wet brush tip. So I wanna make sure I get some water out. And then I'm gonna start with my lightest color. So that's gonna be our acorn. Just add that color in here fast. This doesn't take long at all, but it will look like, let me move it so you can see better. It will look like it, you really knew what you were doing because you're gonna follow, add this lightest color into the middle parts. And then you're gonna follow all of the shading. So let's go to our next darkest brown. I'll put all of the colors that I used um, on my blog post for this. So I'm going to do my acorn bottom, the lighter of the two. And you can see it's, I'm not hardly using any water. It's much more kind of a blender pen, but you don't have to keep buying them. And then here's my darker. And again, I'm following the outline of the shading that the Stampin' Up! artists have already put on your stamp for you. This, I find this really therapeutic. I think it's a great stress reliever. Once you get coloring, it kind of takes you back to that same thing as a childhood where you, in your childhood, where you feel like you're creating. Um, and if you have th other things you're worrying about in life, they kind of go away because you're just thinking about coloring. So now I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna do the mango first. And you can see I'm not hardly putting it doesn't take hardly any color because these are so tiny. So just fill this in. At least when we go to fall, if we can't go places to all the festivals and all of the fun things, I hope that it's glorious. These yellow leaves. I love when our trees go hugely yellow. And then I've got the Merlot and the Cherry Cobbler. So I'm going to do Merlot first. Oh, I didn't do the pumpkin pie because I'm dreaming about fall. So just grab the Merlot in there. Just like that. And then we get the Cherry Cobbler. The nice thing about these is it doesn't really matter if the colors mix it all on them because except for the acorn, it wouldn't be red. 
but if there's a little bit of these other colors in a leaf, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then when you switch, I usually just do it on the back of my hand or my shirt. You can do it on the chamois, um, but because I'm, you can see I'm not using hardly any water. Now let's get our pumpkin pie. But this tip is a whole lot finer. Look how tiny that is than a blender pen. And a blender pen, you wouldn't, it blends everything. It doesn't pick up the ink quite so well. It's, I love them. They're one of my favorite tools, but for this particular project, the water painter works. And if you have the old um, aqua painters, there's no, none of ours had the spine of a tip. Okay, so there we've got that. Then I'm just gonna take my markers and I'm gonna go with the darkest one and I'm gonna use the brush tip and I'm just barely gonna touch again over the shading. And it just darkens it all right up. And then you can take it if you want and pull that ink over. You can see how it pulls it out. And it gives it one more little fun thing of shading. So then let's get the cherry cobbler on here. And I'm just kind of dabbing it. Like you don't want to color. But you can see how that is way darker and it didn't take any water. That one doesn't even need to be blended. And then I'm gonna take my pumpkin pie, which is one of the oldest markers I have and you can tell, but it's perfect even though it is kind of smushed, it's perfect for this technique. There you go. Aren't those beautiful and so easy to do. So I'm gonna let them dry just a second, even though it's on the watercolor paper. I don't want it to smear when I punch it out. So let's go back over to this. This is, if you don't have the Stamp and Seal Plus yet, you're gonna want it after you see it. I am a huge fan of both our Seal and the Seal Plus, but I'm gonna follow the curl along, along the edge. So again, right where I put that on there, I wanna make sure that I'm getting it so it's, cause this is gonna hold my ring on. And some of you are like, that's not gonna hold the ring on, but it does. So just put it back on here, make sure it's wedged in that seal. And then look, like it is on here. There's no way it's coming off. Um, so it's a great tool to have. And in a second, you're gonna see again that you're gonna want it. We're gonna use this ribbon. And this is from the Forever Greenery Suite. It's in the annual catalog. So you just need a little piece, maybe six inches or so. Just trim that off. This is actually one of the things that we did in the Try It class for the annual catalog on this suite. And then just pull this string. You don't wanna pull it all the way out because if you pull it all the way out, then it'll just go away. So now we have this little ripple here. And I'm gonna spread that out just a little bit so it's not all on there. And stick it in the seal that's on there. You may have to add a little bit of seal, like here I didn't go far enough. And this is the seal plus. The seal wouldn't hold the ring, the hoop on very well. It would hold all the rest of it. So if you're just doing a wreath and you don't have the hoop, just kind of get that there. And then you can take another string from this end now that it's stuck in here. You need one from the center. I'm trying to do it so you can see it, but it makes it hard for me to see what I'm doing. So just grab one. And you can see when you grab one that you get that fun ruffle effect. I'm just gonna kind of stick it as I go. You can see we're already losing a lot of where that looked horrible. Because I know some of y'all were thinking, that's not some very good stamping there, Sherry. That one had just gotten kind of jammed on itself. So now you have a fun little ripple effect. The nice thing is, is this is supposed to look fallish. So all these random strings, I'm just gonna leave them. Now we're gonna take our punch, our three punches. You get three, and if you, when you get the designer series paper for this suite, um, there's a lot of the images on it that will punch out as well. Now it's watercolor paper, so it takes one more little push 
than if you do the shimmer white. And those are the two that you would want to do this technique on because if you add water to the other ones, they're not going to look great. So there's those two. Then let's get this leaf. Whoops. <laughs> and then the acorn. Okay, now we just have to stick it all together. So I'm going to take one of the acorns and I want the one that's the prettiest. So I like this one. And I'm just going to stick it down there. On my other card, it's much closer to the thank you. But I need to cover up where I got black on my card. And for this, you can use the seal. So just far enough over that it covers that up. And then I'm going to start with these and you just lay them on the back of here and pull and then that gets enough of the seal on there. Stick one here. And then do the same color so they don't end up right next to each other and just pull that. Stick that in there. Let's do our yellow ones. I like it to look like it's coming out of the wreath so kind of stick it underneath. A little bit of the ribbon and then this one and you can see now I'm just getting those wisps of the stuff that was behind that's why I didn't care if it was perfect stamping and then add the acorn there we go and then these are also from the annual catalog they are the um, in color enamel dots yeah, again, if you have any smudges anywhere, this is the perfect time. Like I could have just stuck one of those over there and put my enamel dots down there instead. So I'm going to use two of the bumblebee. And you can just put them wherever you think it looks like it needs a little bit of filler. So let's go up here. And I'm going to use one of the cinnamon cider. So I didn't even use the cinnamon cider on the card, but it's a fall enough color that it doesn't matter. Stick this one. Hmm. I don't know where I want to put this one. Let's try there. And then if you feel like any of these need, like this might need a little something extra. So I'm going to take a mini dimensional because this one's kind of raised up and just stick it on the back of here. Because it's not, it was not touching as much stuff. The rest of them are all touching paper. So there we go. And then I'm gonna take the regular size dimensionals. And that's why we have two sides to every piece of paper. <laughs> and if I would have messed up again, I just would have cut those off and made a smaller piece and used it when I do punch out images. Don't throw your, don't throw your pieces of paper away because you mess up on them. There's still plenty of paper on there I could have used if, um, I'd stamped wrong on both sides. I'll pull those off and then just stick it in the middle of this. And the thank you, the poor stamping is why I didn't stamp directly on my card because then I would have, if you stamp directly on your card and you mess up, then cut a piece of this and go over the top. Then one fun little last touch for this is this is some Young Living essential oil and you could send this in the, the box um, and I was going to write was on it. It's a little bit of orange and a little bit of clove. You actually get quite a, you can get quite a lot in these tiny little bottles. And these are just from Amazon. And so I'm just going to take my ribbon because then when they open the card, it's also going to smell like fall. It smells wonderful right now. I wish you could smell it. So you just dab some on there. So this is orange and clove. And as long as you don't get it on the stamping, it smells fabulous. Um, then when they pull this out of their beautiful gold envelope, then it's going to smell like fall as well. So there you go. This is the one that I did on shimmer white. I will take the close up picture of the two different looks that you get when you stamp on shimmer white and emboss um, or um, 
watercolor and when you do the watercolor paper. It's a subtle difference. You can kind of tell more on this. This one gets more modelly. This one gets more blendy because it stops sooner on the, the shimmer white. But look how fabulous that is. Is that not just beautiful? So if you're interested in joining me for this online class, this isn't one of the projects um, because in that class, we'll be using the stuff that actually comes in the suite. And this, I didn't use the ribbon or any of the embellishments that come in the suite. It has beautiful acorns and it has um, copper ribbon. And I didn't want to, at first I thought I would use the copper ribbon, but this gold, I wanted to go with the gold. So I hope you enjoy that. If you need um, the supplies, then just look below my video and make sure you join my email list. So you can find out what my thank you gifts are for this month. Have a great day. Bye.